Okay, uh, let me make sure my captions are working. Don't be rude, captions. Hmm. Sometimes my captions do this, they just firmly refuse to play nice. I do mean that microphone. Thank you, captions. Gonna move the microphone a little bit. Okay. So, we're going to be playing uh, something a little different today on Tuesday. Uh, also, I have not uh, <laughs> I've not streamed in a while. Uh, poor, sweet, dear library cat, who we have seen plenty of on the stream, uh, he had himself uh, some bladder stones, so I had to take a week to handle that. And also, I lost my job for a hot minute there. So I had to take some time to handle that. Uh, I've finally gotten all my ducks in a row uh, in that regard. So now I'm actually able to stream again. Uh, I'm real excited. <laughs> I've been missing streaming. It's weird, but I've been really missing streaming. Um, oh. <laughs> Uh, so let me talk about superhuman industrial incorporate uh, superhuman industrial immaterial superhuman industrial and immaterial incorporated. It's a little bit like uh, it's a little bit like Ratchet and Alone in the sense that it's like you roll a die and tell a story. Um, and I don't know, I. I hadn't given it a very close look before now and I was like well I don't want to do another wretched and alone because they're really down tempo and sad and I need to keep them spaced out now is not a good year for down tempo and sad <laughs> um there's I have one more wretched and alone that we can play at some point um it is set in a time loop which I'm very interested in it's a very fun uh, thing, but I'm also kind of tempted to not play any more Wretched and Alones until we finish hacking off pieces of Wretched and Alone to make a happier Wretched and Alone. <laughs> but we'll see. Anyway, uh, I'll be streaming for as long as I can tonight. And uh, if Superhuman Industrial doesn't eat up all of our time, uh, we'll play some Ex Novo. I have done some research here and there and i think i have some ideas that i want to move forward with on uh the uh the progenitors not the progenitor city for kermaestran that's a whole different thing that i need to research more but the uh dendron you know how there were the the tabaxi that moved into dendron uh, yeah, the city that they come from, uh, I have the research completed on that. Well, I don't have the research entirely completed. I would, I could dig for years on what I'm using for source material, but I have some ideas that I'm willing to run with. So we'll get there when we get there. Uh, for now, let's dig in on Superhuman Industrial uh, and see what we get. Welcome to Middleport. The city of Middleport is a well-known hub for superheroes, not least of all because the Storm Sign Initiative is based out of the Uptown Spire. It's pretty cool, honestly, watching all these superheroes do their thing. And you might not be super-powered, but that doesn't mean you can't be a part of the action. Lucky you, you're an employee at Superhuman Industrial and Immaterial Incorporated, a supercorp dealing with everything that goes into the production of being a superhero, from costume design to public Opinion Research, SI, or S3 does it all. Listen, I know those are three I's, but it's fine. Uh, uh, how to play. Best way to play this game is write it out or record yourself talking through everything. Uh, you roll a D6 and improvise a sitcom-style situation. Uh, you know, the everyday intrigue of a worker with an average 9 to 5 uh, in the realm of superhero support before you start choose a name uh, this thing recommends having a name generator handy I might actually open a name generator because I'm real bad at names 
Uh, after that, you roll 1d6 for each question, expand on events, and build a story. Uh, yeah, it's it's basically just um, it's basically just a sitcom set in you know it's an improvised sitcom set in the DC universe, for example. So we need a name. Uh, does chat have a name for me? <laughs> Uh, now would be a great time to, uh, throw names into the hat. I'm gonna open a name generator while we wait, just in case that nobody comes up with names. I also should check my stream, if my stream is, you know, solvent and or good. Solvent is probably not the word I'm looking for, but let's check on my stream super quick while we open a name generator. Already the cats are scritching at the door. Scritch, scritch, scratch. Yeah, well, you can't come in. Hey, you cannot come in, sir. If you're gonna stay in there and scritch all night, we're gonna have a problem. Well, at least the stream looks good. Okay, well that's good news. Uh, let's open a name generator then. Name generator. Random name generator. Sure. Generator name. I don't like that one. <laughs> We're generating another one. Uh, that's a little on the nose. Mm. Amelia. Emiliana. Emiliana Motto. I like that. So that's spelled like this in case you want to do something cool. So Emiliana, commonly Amy to her friends works in that's a two so amy works in r d and engineering public opinion research gadget development fabric tech you might have a hand at any part of it you even have a little drone you call hoover that's taken on some kind of some kind of digital sentience okay so i think uh amy works in costume design or rather costume development I like that. Rather than costume design, which is like, you know, what what does your hero costume look like? Costume development is what does your costume do? Does it augment your powers? Does it give you powers? Is it is it colored in orange fall tones despite the fact that you have ice powers to throw people off? What's its deal? Amy helps decide. And we have we have Hoover buzzing around. Who sounds like that? Um, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna be able to tune out Magnus scritching all night. Hi, you can't stand closed doors, can you? I close a door for five minutes, and that's too much for you, huh? Yeah. You know what? You know what? You're gonna be on screen now. You're gonna be on screen. Hey, come here. You're gonna be on screen. Cause you had to be in here, didn't you, kitty? Oh, here comes library. Come here, Magnus. You're being on stream. You're being on screen, kitty. You're being on screen. He's like, nope, no, I'm not. There he go. But we saw Magnus, if only but for a second. Library. Library. Come here, kitty. Library. I can see you hearing me, library. Come here. Come on. Come up here. Library cat. Library. Yeah, I can see you hearing me. His, like, ears tilted back to hear me. Come here. Fine. That's the thing. No, Magnus, you're not... 
supposed to be back there. <sighs> Come here. Come out of there. This is why I had the door closed, so I wouldn't get distracted from the whole stream. Yeah. This is why I had the door closed, kitty. There we go. Okay. So, Amy works in costume development, which is very close to gadget development. It's what your costume does to either enhance your power, give you power, or just make your superheroing life easier. Usually, for most people, that amounts to just, you know, some armor, because they're super strong or super fast. They have some aspect of themselves amplified, but they're not indestructible, so they need armor, so they don't just explode when someone with super strength punches them in the chest and makes them slide back, like, five feet. <laughs> Gosh dang it, Magnus. <sighs> Fine, he can cause problems while we're telling this story, I guess. Specifically, I think our, our uh, area of expertise is armoring. Uh, so, you know, not only can you get punched and anime slide back like five feet, you also can not look like every comic book panel where the clothing is very strategically ripped to almost fall off. <laughs> you know, that doesn't, that doesn't make for a very effective costume in the real world of superheroes. Uh, we, we arrive at the office uh, on Monday morning, and we take a look throughout the office. Hi, library. And library's causing problems. Come here. Come here. That means you, sir. Come here. Come here. Come here. There we go. Come here. Come on. Come on over. There we go. Hi. Hello. Here is library. He's, he's finally all better, aren't you? Anyway, uh, we look around the office and find that we see our work BFF. What are they doing? That's what we roll a die for. A one. They're in the next cubicle. So the person right next to us, uh, these are pretty generously. These are only loosely cubicles. They're more like designated lab spaces that have kind of a temporary wall between them. <laughs> You know, you, the, the, the department is designed to be modular, so usually, usually, uh, you know, if, if someone developing something needs a larger space, there's, like, slideable walls that can move around, and, and usually that doesn't tend to be a problem, because people don't, you know, develop anything explosive on the 30th floor of this high-rise, because they're usually pretty smart about it, aren't they? And so our, our BFF is, is our current lab neighbor. Their name is not coming to me without a generator, I can tell you that. Their name is... No, that's way too much. Uh, I don't know how to say that one. Nope. Wow, this is giving me just just whiffing constantly. Uh, yeah, I'm all right with that. Their name is Claudia Delimu. Uh, I'm gonna type that so everyone knows how it's spelled. Claudia Delimu. So our BFF Claudia Delimu. Uh, Delimu. I put an extra L in there. You can decide where that extra L is. Um, <laughs> works not in fabric, not in uh, arm armory, but rather uh, the the exact opposite. Uh, Claudia works in uh, arms, so they work on. Ow! Apparently, getting bit by my cat, Magnus. Very bad boy. Anyway, he didn't actually bite me. He just kind of, eh. you know what I mean? When cat, you know, you know, like if you have a cat, you know what I mean, where they don't actually bite you, but like they kind of just mouth you. Like, no, don't do that. 
anyway, I have to overreact so they don't, uh, so they don't keep trying to do it. But that strategy doesn't seem to work very well for Magnus. Where was I? Uh, Claudia works in arms, which is kind of the exact opposite of armory. Uh, you know, it's it's laser beams and you know channeling energy projectiles and you know rockets and that kind of thing it's letting people with combat oriented powers use their combat oriented powers magnus you're not supposed to be up there this is why i closed the door kitty cat hang on a second come here come on we're going we're going out the door come on come on i know you want to get the string come on I know you want to come get the string. Yeah, you've really worked yourself into a pickle, haven't you? It's because you're not supposed to be back there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come out of there. I know you want out of there. Come on. Do not be like this. You're fine. Let me put you up. Put you up. Pick you up. Cause he's a bad boy. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Claudia works in arms, and we like to joke that we're polar opposites, and opposites attract, so we're best buds. Uh, our work nemesis, however, is in a costume. I think there's a specific... Okay. Uh, there is a specific cape that we do not like. Why do we not like them? Are they really, are they really nitpicky about what they need out of their costume? Yes. <laughs> I like that idea. So our work nemesis is a specific cape. Uh, this specific cape does not have like a combat like street level uh superpower they instead have like maximized engineering brain whether they actually like <laughs> whether they actually have like some kind of engineering knowledge or whether they just kind of pull ideas out of the out of potential futures or something it's never been established or at least we never we never cared enough to get it established uh, as the person who does not like them and because they have such a big engineering brain they're always like you didn't do this you didn't perform this correctly i wanted it to this exact specification and now that it's off by ten thousandth one ten thousandth of an inch my specifications are no longer correct you've ruined blah, 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 blah. and they're just like a very picky pocus about everything and so we really do not like them. We're like, oh, this dude again. And uh, they don't even have a really, they don't have a very, uh, a very entertaining, um, hang on, my brain fell out. They don't have a very entertaining persona either. They're not a very, like, flashy hero. Well, they, they, they're not a very flashy hero. They're not very impressive. They'd be a lot better being a cape, like, rather than being a cape, just being behind the brains behind like a big r&d department like where we were working but instead they decide to be batman and be a street level hero despite having no power whatsoever and just kind of like decking themselves out with as much as much impressive gear as they can get their hands on uh and i think their name is what's a good superhero name for a tech hero Gear is taken. Uh, obviously, Iron Man is taken. Uh, is Paragon taken? Is Paragon a superhero already? I feel like Paragon or Pinnacle would be good. Like that kind of. It's a very. It's a. It's got that p p percussiveness to it, but it it implies that like I am of the greatest echelon and I will not be defeated. Let's say Pinnacle. I like that. So Pinnacle, uh, who is a street level cape, uh, is very picky pocus about their costumes, and we don't like that. 
We especially don't like that they deal only in their costume. Uh, like, they, they do not feel that they can trust the big corporate entity with uh, neither the intellectual property of their designs or... <laughs> Um, or their, you know, identity. Most capes, you know, there's confidentiality agreements and, like, you can get, you can get into a huge amount of trouble if you break confidentiality, uh, if you break confidentiality agreements that would then get a, a cape, um, you know, incriminated in their heroing acts so villains can do stuff and just for the sheer fact of, you know, they know they don't want to give the villains any kind of advantage. Uh, there's a massive legal toll. Uh, there are certain, like, villainous companies that have specifically hired fall fall people to gather incriminating evidence uh, for, hero, for heroes by being an R&D division. Uh, and they're currently being investigated by the Anti-Heroic uh, Oversight League. Or the the anti heroic uh, the anti heroic damages guild, uh, who is a recently uh, formed more or less union for superheroes that keeps them from uh, becoming you know just vigilante justice. Instead, there's you know some sort of rules. Of course, there's obviously capes outside of the rules and stuff, but you know. That happens in any hero society. There's always, oh, I'm a militiaman. I'm I'm an anti-hero. I don't need to pay attention to the law. But by and large, there is a superheroics guild that sets the rules so they don't, you know... If they explode downtown Manhattan, someone's getting the bill, and it's not the city of New York. <laughs> okay, so we've established all of that. Uh... So Paragon is our nemesis. Paragon, no Pinnacle. I I feel like, I feel like Paragon is taken. Is Paragon a superhero? I'm googling this because it's gonna drive me nuts if I don't. Paragon superhero. Paragon. Uh are three separate heroes in Marvel Comics. Okay. Uh, yeah, Paragon's the code name used by three unrelated fictional characters from Marvel Comics. The first was genetically engineered by the Enclave, which sounds like a big old pile of villains that they used for some crossover comic and then never used again. Um, the second was created as an original character for the video game Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects. And the third is a hero and a member of the Nebraska's initiative team. Uh, that sounds like they were making superhero teams and they went, oh no, we only have teams on the east and west coast. We need a, we need a Midwest coast. Or we need a Midwest team. Uh, 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 generate this character, Paragon. They're in Nebraska, you know, that a place that definitely needs superheroes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway now that i've st finished lambasting marvel for the night i have more but i won't uh okay so we get into our office uh it the lab is thankfully untouched from the last time we were in here uh and it's not a huge deal <laughs> like yeah, it's, it's not a huge deal. Uh, everything's where it should be. Uh, every, all of our raw materials have arrived that we've requisitioned for various costumes. But we have to deal with... Roll, roll, roll. roll. Uh, the investors. Unfortunately, because of all our raw materials being here on time and in place, we have, uh, we have not only our good boy... Our, our good sweet drone boy um hang on yeah uh, we not only do i ha do we have uh, our good sweet dear drone boy hoover who cheerfully beeps at us as we enter the room we also have three completely silent uh menacing looking uh 
uh, very, very solid, very stoic looking uh, hover cameras that uh, as we as we walk in, they're completely silent. But once we uh, uh, give them a look like, what are you doing here? Uh, one of them out of the side of itself uh, sticks a speaker and it reads off uh, a little bit of like legalese that essentially boils down to hello. We are here from your investing parent company to make sure that you use, you are using these duly requisitioned raw materials correctly. <laughs> and it's like it's like thirty minutes of legalese stating exactly how you're intended to use these raw materials, and that we were going that we're going to be in a great deal of trouble if you use these raw materials uh too far outside their intended uses sure you can use them for uh surprise projects or projects that are adjacent to the things that they were requisitioned for but regardless you have to be using them for hero work you can't just steal all these raw materials and make villain costumes with them uh you know that kind of thing and then and we're under five billion different ndas uh, to make sure that nobody's secret identities get out, none of the mechanics of their costumes get out, so villains can't cheat, that kind of thing. And it's very boring, and we kind of just, like, uh, glaze over, because we know what it boils down to is use them for what they were contracted for, and do not speak about it to anyone. <laughs> and despite how many times the legalese has been restated, you, you know that's always how it be and we finally uh, stop listening to legalese and figure out that uh something else is up what happened is a roll that's a six guess whose turn it is to get kidnapped this week unfortunately uh well let, first let's find out how bad it is roll 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 one uh you can totally handle this Unfortunately, while we're sitting there glazed over, like, I don't want to listen to this legalese anymore, I know exactly what it means, uh, one of the other drones that doesn't have a speaker on it buzzes up to our face while we're not paying attention and <laughs> shoots out a bunch of sleep gas into our face, and you go, <laughs> I can handle this, thud, onto the floor, goes poor Amy, asleep, very asleep, and, uh, fortunately, uh, yeah, what else could go wrong? Let's roll. Let's find out. Uh, that's a four. The office plants seem to have ul ulterior motives. Yes, absolutely, that's what happens. Uh, we get gassed by this drone, and then, uh, in our half-awake state, we're like, ugh. Uh, like trying to stay awake because you're like no i have so many deadlines to meet why did it have to be today that i'm getting kidnapped and you hear uh you have a single little aloe plant that's very it, it's very cheerfully you know living its life normally it's a little aloe plant its name is its name is uh aloysius Alo uh, aloysius is that an actual name i don't care it's an it's a name for this aloe plant uh poor aloysius over there, you hear you hear it give out a bunch of like moist creaking, like <laughs> because uh, someone uh, with plant brain is uh, is forcing Aloysius to tie you up, and when you wake up, you're covered, you're you're surrounded in aloe like this. And it's because it's an aloe plant and it was not designed to grow that quickly. It's also very sticky and very gross. And you just kind of... Our, our hero is just very like... This is gross. And like she tries to struggle a little bit. And it just makes it more disgusting and moist. And like the little points that come off of the aloe plant are like scratching us. And it's not that big of a deal because, like, all the aloe gunkus, like, soaks into the cuts, so it's not a big deal. But you're still kind of su stuck, and it's not a pleasant time. Uh, but fortunately, we have a trick up our sleeve, which is that favor we never called in. Uh, thankfully, we spotted Claudia uh, some materials last week, uh, which shh, the higher-ups aren't supposed to know about that. It's a secret. 
because technically it's breaking the the 30 minutes of legalese we were talking about earlier but it's fine because technically that's but it's fine because nobody knows about it but because nobody knows about it claudia is uh caught unawares by the fact that we were about to get kidnapped by plant brain mcgee who doesn't have a name because they're not an important character um we're just glad it's not pinnacle and uh claudia walks in to say say hello and say good morning uh and finds us you know being eaten by aloysius our aloe plant and uh claudia kind of rolls their eyes and it says something like, "Well, you're uh, you're really in a sticky, sticky situation here. Uh, let me help you out of there." And uh, uh, they uh, they very hurriedly <laughs> uh, improvise a like plant destabilizing gun out of some of the spare materials that you're not supposed to have any of, um, and destabilizes a bunch of Aloysius, so by the time the plant the plant meister <laughs> tries to sneak in here through like being a plant and growing through the vents or something and they show up like oh I'm going to capture this this costume maker and they have they have a gross green mustache that they're, they can twirl. I'm surprised my mustache is long enough to do this, by the way. It's not really, but I kind of can anyway. Uh, mm, yes. Mm, yes, I'm finally going to get my revenge against that costume maker. Because for some reason, uh, they assume that uh, after having been defeated by Pinnacle, that you are at fault. Um, and... <laughs> Uh, but no, Claudia has destabilized a bunch of the plant. Thankfully, Aloysius is A-OK -okay down there. He's just a little aloe boy living his life, just sitting in a puddle of destabilized aloe now, and it looks really gross. But the plant dude uh, comes in, twirling his mustache, like, oh, I'm going to do something evil. And then he notices that both of you are uh, untied and very upset looking. And then he notices the three legalese robots of which only one of them was his fault. Only the sleep gas one was his fault. Uh, and the other two see him, and an alarm starts going off. <laughs> Villain detected. Villain detected. Lockdown enabled. <laughs> uh, the... The modular walls uh, just thump, 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 thump down around this villain, and uh, he sits there like, No! No! Unacceptable! Banging on the glass walls. Oh, by the way, did I mention these walls are glass so you can see what everyone else is doing? It's very Panopticon, and it's kind of gross, but that's the decision corporate made. They're all like borosilicate glass, if you're curious. Um... <laughs> You know, like Pyrex. And the, the villain sits there and bangs on the glass for a while, uh, but eventually gets... Shoo, uh, a hole opens in the floor, and they get pneumatic tubed off somewhere in the world. Because, of course, there's pneumatic tubes here for travel. Why wouldn't there be? And uh, you, uh, our, our brave hero here, Amy, uh, goes to, like, a decontamination set shower somewhere on the floor to get all this aloe gunkus off of herself. And then after getting that all squared away, she's, like, two, three hours behind on whatever project she had planned for the day, so she has to work super hard. But the end of the day uh, does not sneak up on her. She knows it's coming. It's time to head home. What's my commute like? It, I can walk. Thankfully, I can walk. It's true. Uh... Thankfully, because of the location of this R&D uh, division being, you know, 30 floors up in a, in a random skyscraper, uh, we just kind of take the stairs down because uh, they, uh, Amy's had enough bad experiences with the elevators in this town. There's a reason so many elevators, so many superheroes, like, first saves are rescuing elevators. For some reason, uh, someone did not implement a very good safety elevator, so, like... 
So, like, elevators are just not very trusted here. So, Amy takes the stairs, and it takes a little while because, you know, it's 30 flights of stairs. It's a lot of stairs. Uh, she has very buff legs because of it. Uh, actually, let's make it even more fun. Yes, broadly, uh, elevators are not trusted in the society, but Amy actually, uh, the first contact with a super she had, uh, you know, you, you know, in a society where superheroes exist, you know, you're, you're just kind of like, yeah, yeah, you hear about them in the media, like, they do cool things, like, they save people. The first thing that, the first time Amy interacted with a super was, uh, when she was very young, uh, you know, let's say 10 years old, just because, so she's an old enough to remember, but young enough to be deeply traumatized by it. Uh, she nearly dies in a runaway elevator, elevator accident, accident, and, uh, a superhero just barely saves her and her parents, uh, whose names aren't gonna get picked, because I don't want to sit here a billion years with a name generator, and, uh, so she's very traumatized by elevators, and so she doesn't take them, so she has very strong legs that are very good at climbing stairs, so she climbs 30, 30, 60 flights of stairs every day because 30 up, 30 down. Thankfully, she lives uh, on the ground floor of a building. Where is that? Uh, it's the building right next door. It's not even a skyscraper. This, uh, this R&D building sticks out super badly uh, because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a 40 floor skyscraper surrounded by like three or four floor buildings but because of uh because this is popularly known to be like an r&d uh place for uh both hero and villain costumes although the villain costumes are not uh on the record um people just kind of ignore it as a matter of tact you know unless you're some kind of small time villain with no prospects to make any money or a small time hero that you know your day job is being a security guard for here anyway uh hero society broadly avoids this unless they need something anyway we, we're walking home it's literally like a block or two uh but we hit a snag uh what's the snag Stormside's annual parade. How could you forget? There's an annual parade for Pinnacle because Pinnacle's pulled off a lot of really cool saves um, over the years. Uh, Pinnacle's been a hero for a good while. And uh, once, a, once a year, uh, provided that Pinnacle keeps uh, doing cool things and making good saves, uh, they get... A parade and so somehow despite our apartment being literal moments from where we work pinnacle gets in the way and it's really frustrating that's always oh, it's always pinnacle isn't it and pinnacle's bright green costume just grates upon our eyes it's like it's it's that dis it's like that very 1990s bright green that's somehow come back into fashion here in superhero landia uh in the year 2040 uh you know the 90s are old enough to have unearned nostalgia and so that bright the bright fluorescent green and the accents like the mask are uh complete our vanta like a vanta black black like so black they suck your eye the like they like suck the light out of the air you know it's like a void it's like someone photoshopped the hole there <laughs> um the costume is just garish and you hate seeing it every time um but you know thankfully because you live right there the parade is not that much of an inconvenience and we finally get home uh and we get to take a breather uh what do we do with our time we do yoga we're so we're so stressed at having to deal with pinnacle and the weird mustache twirly plant guy uh from work that we just spend uh like 
a good while doing some yoga to loosen our muscles, loosen those muscles in our legs after the after the hearty workout that is 30 flights of stairs. And uh, it's very relaxing. It's very pleasant. And thankfully, Pinnacle no longer occupies our mind, at least for now. We just sat down to watch our favorite cooking show. When we get a call from work, you answer and... Oh no, a call from work. Uh, a building has disappeared. Um, the top half of our building has completely disappeared. Uh, that includes the floor you were working on. Uh, just completely gone. It's been teleported somewhere arbitrary, despite the fact that 99% of superhero society uh, um, avoids this building for scores. Uh, someone decided, I need a lot of raw materials and I need them quickly, so they just that top half of the building out of the out of the out of nowhere and uh they're in calling to inform you that now we're going to have to uh we're gonna have to have you come in uh as close to the floor that you're used to working on is and sit down with the red tape department and uh make sure that all your NDA ndas covered a clause like this and if not we need them all rewritten asap and uh, even despite the fact that they need to be rewritten ASAP, you know the gears of the legal system are going to be incredibly slow about this. And you're sure that at least the building itself will be back. It might be completely stripped of resources. So obviously, you're off work. This is a problem for tomorrow. We need to get some rest. We lay down to sleep. And get some sleep and then in the morning uh your glasses are missing you're sure they'll turn up somewhere so you you put on a uh you put on a spare pair of glasses there are a little they're a little less good looking than your current pair of glasses and they don't have the like nice uh zoom lenses that you can like control by modulating the like running your fingers along the sides of the glasses to zoom in and out, which is which was a super nice thing for you know design or production of costumes and like design of new things, you know that that was a really handy feature. But your your other glasses are just bifocal, so you have to like down the bottom half of your glasses to zoom in. It's really annoying. But despite it being annoying, you know it's fine. Uh, you get there, and shocker, the building is back. Uh, and like you predicted, uh, none of your materials, none of your materials are there. Uh, the, 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 the half of the building that was teleported away has been completely ransacked. Uh, and you have like a bunch of, uh, orders for, uh, replacement materials. Thankfully, you didn't have to actually sit down with the red tape department. Uh, this was covered under their insurance policy uh, as mass theft. <laughs> Literal mass theft. So uh, we finally get to work. And other than the lack of things, uh, we realize that something feels weird. Uh, walking through our department, you hear an overcall, overhear a call between your boss and whom you suspect is a villain for hire. So, uh, as we're walking through depart th through our department, mumble mutt, and everybody's, I can't believe I have to wait to do wait like three days to do all my projects now. This is really inconvenient. Uh, you overhear your boss on the phone. Uh, your boss, uh, Charles, uh, Charles Myers, let's say, and uh, Charles Myers is. Uh, he's a very stereotypical superhero type boss. Where uh, he has a very, uh, he he's very irate and his voice is very tight, and he's got a little bit of jowliness in his voice, and he's talking and he's doing his best to whisper, but he's not doing very well because his voice is really loud, and you realize that <laughs> first of all, I can't do that voice anymore, um. <laughs> But you also realize that who Charles is talking to 
is the weirdo plant guy from before. Turns out he let them into the building to try and get you kidnapped, to try and uh, get the company's uh, wrongful kidnapping uh, insurance to fire so you'd get a little bit of extra bonus for getting you back. Well, it turns out you never left the premises, so the, uh, the insurance never fired, so he's very upset. Uh, what do we do about hearing that, though? Uh, let's find out. We rolled a two. Try the fire escape. So uh, upon hearing this, we uh, panic. We're like, oh no, I'm not getting kidnapped again. I already had enough of this one time. It's bad enough there's random kidnappings taking place in this building, and we head for the fire ex for the fire exit. The fire exit is not like a you know cheap ladder and pair of stairs, not up this far. It's a wormhole, and it's supposed to only be used in a very, in, in obviously, a fire situation. You know, a situation in which something really bad is happening and everybody needs to evac so that the heroes can actually solve the problem without having to handle evac. So you open the fire door, dive out, and uh, we get... We get schlorped out through the fire escape portal. And where does it take us? Uh oh, we. This is so far above your pay grade. You do what you can, but you clock out at five. Honestly, not your monkey, not your circus. So, even despite. So, as we're uh, falling through the interdimensional wormhole, uh, we remember that this job, this job does not pay well enough for us to care. Uh, despite what you might think, uh, research and development for superhero costumes does not pay very well because superheroing doesn't pay very well. There's a reason there's a superhero union. And so, you know, we realized that, yeah, they might come after me for using the fire escape uh, unlawfully, but it doesn't matter. We can just find another job. It's not that big a deal, right? Okay, so that was uh, that was a game of superhero industrial and immaterial incorporated uh, by Linda Kodega. Uh, let me post the link to this author's work. Doot. What happens if I click this? Like in the Twitch chat? Oh, it opens a Chrome window. Okay. Um, so yeah, that that was uh, superhero immaterial, uh, in industrial, uh, superhero immaterial and industrial incorporated. It's only three dollars on itch.io right now, and I'm, uh, honestly, I had a great time playing that. It's super cute. It's a great way to like uh. You know, just off the cuff improv a superhero story. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm gonna st I'm gonna say so. Uh, in the comments here, uh, after stream anyway. Um, what else has this person done? Um, let's look. Let's see. Uh, we will stop the bulldozers, which is a two person RPG about resisting. Development in the Appalachias. Uh, Star Drawn, which is a tarot-powered RPG about going uh, into space, apparently. Yeah. Uh, it's about... Yeah, it's about living in a galaxy at the end of a war. Okay, that's fun. Uh, I don't like that it uses tarot cards, but... We've we've we have figured out an alternative to tarot cards, so it's not that big a deal. I'm interested. Uh, that's six dollars. I don't know. Uh, there is a game called The Bookshelf, which is one I have. Um, I don't think that I can play it on stream. It's about sitting in front of your bookshelf and like Marie condoing your books. Yeah, it's uh. Yeah, it's about taking the time to organize your books, remember their value, and rewrite a story based on the stories you've already created with them. Yeah. It's super cute. Um, 
Yeah, someone describes it as a mindfulness exercise. I would agree with that. Let's see if anything else sticks out. Uh, they've written some supplements for other games. There's a masks supplement, which uh, color me interested, even if I don't enjoy masks a bunch. Like, I like masks. Okay, let me be clear. I really like masks if someone else is running masks. Um, because the only damage you can take in masks is stat damage. And I, as a DM, always forget about stat damage existing. And I think because masks is designed to be a powered by the apocalypse game and i'm so used to powered by the apocalypse games having like a specific health meter you can tick off instead of taking stat damage it just throws me off so like i love to play masks it's a really fun like i'm very comfortable in superhero settings and i like the idea of your stats being how you take damage <laughs> uh so, like, if somebody else is DMing masks, I'm super interested, you know? Oh, there's a Monster of the Week cu custom playbook they wrote. Uh, it's called The Star. I'm call I'm interested. There is a one... There's a D&D &D setting and a D&D &D beast. That's super cool. They've also contributed to a few games. That's cool. Um, yeah. I think that's... That's all from here. Oh, there's a lasers and feelings hack about uh, punk rock. It's kind of fun. But, oh, this is just like, this is just straight up free, this Monster of the Week custom playbook. Uh, you can name your own price, but like, it's it's ostensibly free. Yeah, it's designed by, yeah, it's inspired by like, the Hex Girls from uh scooby-doo and the like <laughs> the blurb is i'm a rock star baby but that's not all i am i use my power money and influence to look into creepy things wherever i go touring is the perfect cover to get in those abandoned band asylums yeah that's really cool i don't know i really like custom monster of the week playbooks they're really fun i'll keep an eye on that one anyway that was superhero or Superhuman Industrial and Material Incorporated. It's it's fun. It's a good way to like throw together an improv story super quick. Like to me, it reads as a way to like throw a story together really quick and then like build off of that story later. You know, it's something you do to get over your writer's block. Okay, so with that, I'm going to be right back super quick. I'm going to use the bathroom, and then when we come back, uh, we will be playing Ex Novo, uh, and we'll be working on that city I mentioned. So let me do this, and we will in fact be right back in just a few.
All right. Uh, okay. Hello, Jubilee. Glad to see you're watching. Uh, seems like you just missed uh, the superhuman industrial half of the stream, but you haven't missed Ex Novo. Let me just open MS Paint here so I can do my doodling. Doodly doodly do. Uh, we also need to get the layout squared away. Uh, okay, so we'll be focusing on high filters. I would like to change that. I'm having difficulty hearing you like you're really far away. Uh, okay, uh, I can turn the sound dampening down a little bit on my microphone. How's this? A little better? That should be a little louder. Uh, I'll keep an eye on chat. Uh, where was I? Filters here. There we go. Uh, okay, so I just need to adjust this one so it's zoomed in on the right thing. Okay, that's, yeah. Oh, wait, no. Uh, okay, so top 500, let's say 600. Uh, bottom is a lot of it. That's a little better, down a little bit. Sorry, I'm actively adjusting the image crop so it plays nice. Cause I want to zoom in on the on the uh, place we are working on this time. Although uh, the plan I have planned for this area means that the coast does not matter much. But I want to, I want to, I want you all to be able to see. So. Hang on, let me, one last adjustment here, and then we should be able to switch back over. And we'll start playing Ex Novo. Okay. Uh, move this up here. Right? Yes. Turn the filter off. Yeah, I'll have to move it back, but, okay, let's do a thing doot there we go okay so um where was i ah yes we're gonna be working on this green the dark green city there uh first of all i need to check if it has a name already because some of these some of these important cities have names uh some of them do not so in my D and D stuff, uh, I have to double check that we did not decide what this city is called already. So this city that we're working on uh, is the progenitor, so to speak, of uh, it's where the colonists came from in Dendron, which is another uh, area, which is that area up at the top left, uh, that blue triangle at the top left is where Dendron is. Um, did we ever decide what this city is called or do we get to later? Aqueduct, ooh yeah, that aqueduct accidentally became good retroactive world building. I'm very glad about that. Uh, Shuttleman's disease, snow leopards, um duh, 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 duh. Uh, yeah so we did not decide upon this city's name so we'll get to decide on this city's name um which we'll get there i think you you, you name your city as like one of the last things you do in ex novo uh speaking of we may not reach the end of this uh city's design 
uh, tonight, because uh, Ex Novo takes a while. But I figured I should do some part of it on, on stream. Get that good, good water. I hope you all are staying hydrated out there. Okay, so... Hmm, unless I named it in here in another lore document. Um, d -d 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 name. Valuables. We did eventually name the city in that red area down on the bottom middle of the map there. Um, we know it ends in Stin because uh, Kermastin, uh, the other triangle uh, up to the right of it. I wish I could show you with the, with the, with the mouse, but I cannot. Uh, da, 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 Quilibus, Brain Trust. The Brain Trust will come up eventually, I promise. Carsus. Let's see here. I know I I know I made this name already. It was because because I had to drop it in a recent session, didn't I? Stin. Kermastin, Kermastin. Kermastin. What do you mean? I didn't hmm? I must have named this place. Uh hang on. Oh, I didn't want Carsus Fables, I want Carsus Lore. The fables for Carsus, by the way, are song lyrics. Um anyway, I know I've named one of these cities, uh, but I have not named all of them. I just need to double check so I don't accidentally trip over my own feet. Uh, lore-wise, what the heck? I was sure I had a name for this. Hmm. I, I guess not. Unless it's in, like, concepts or something. I, I cannot read the concepts document on stream uh, because that's actual spoilers. I'm, I must not have, I guess. I suppose. Anyway, regardless, we're going to be working on uh, this area here. This city whose name has not happened yet, obviously. Um is going to be uh the where is hang on I need to fix this before it drives me crazy sorry my layout is sometimes very picky pocus I also kind of want to crop that thing out of there too I do I'm going to <laughs> oh editing the stream live on stream is everyone's favorite thing There we go. Did, 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 did. We'll bring in the right crop just a smidge so we don't have that little voided space. Yeah, like if I'm going to have the that little void of space there, I'm going to have it on both sides, you know? Anyway, this is the little MS Paint window that we're going to be working on this area in. Okay, so now that we've gotten everything set up, let's actually do the thing. Uh, let's play Ex Novo. First of all, we pick the scale of this city. Uh, I think despite its age, this city is not abundantly large. Uh, th this is just kind of like... The idea I have in mind for this area is it's kind of... It's a rainforest, like, it's a rainforest where there is so much rain that, like, it's practically flooded at all times uh, is part of what I'm thinking about here. So, uh, 
I think it's a, it's a medium city, so there's 11 lines. 11 streets crossing the map here, and 13 citizen tokens. So let's do that. Let's say 13 citizens, and put 11 lines across the map. First and foremost, thank you for mentioning the 11 lines. Uh, rather than doing straight lines, uh, I'm going to give them a little zhuzh like last time. So that's one, two, three, four, Seems like they're avoiding something here. We'll have to keep that in mind. Uh, five. Let's say six here. Seven. Oh, that one didn't draw. Cool. Love that. Eight. Nine. Ten. And we'll have one, like, nice straight line. Uh, let's say here. That is much too thick of a line. That's 11. Okay. So we got lines. Uh, lines are eventually roads. Uh, this place is super old. Uh, I think we, this is something we definitely established, like how old this city is. It's either 20 or 25 turns. I think for my own sake it's 20 turns. Um, that would be in wherever I put the calendar considerations. Wherever I left those. Apologies, the more lore I write for this setting, the less I know where I've left things. I need to, like, organize these better. Uh, na, 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 na. Okay, that's not... It's not there... Okay, how are we playing this game? Because I'm already lost. Okay, so Ex Novo, how it works is you do some setup turns first. You Okay, so first you decide how big and how old your city is. That Based on that, you do some things on screen. How big your city is is how many streets it has. How old your city is is how many turns you're going to be taking. And then uh, you roll to decide some geography features on the map, which is much more useful when you're drawing, when you're doing it completely from scratch instead of having an existing landmass to work from. Uh, and then after you pick, you know, land features, uh, you pick the purpose, uh, the purpose of the settlement. Uh, the why they decided to settle there, um, then some history things like how do they structure their power, how do they, uh, yeah, like how do they structure their power, what factions are there, and then you roll for how many big uh, historical events happen from what you picked earlier. 
So this is the land setup that you've created with 11 lines. These 11 lines go across the land. Now, hang on, let me show super quick uh, another thing that I've made with Ex Novo. And it might make things make a little more sense. Let me pictures. Wait, no, not in pictures, but in another folder. So normally, yes, like if you were playing this rules as written, uh, you would be drawing the landmass as you go. Uh, you draw the landmass first and then draw the lines that cut through it. But I'm cheating a little bit because I have existing um, I have existing an existing continent map that I have to work with. So like for example, the most recent thing we made with Ex Novo is this. It's a little map. Uh, as you can see, sometimes I'm not very creative with my line work, first of all. Actually, wow, those are incredibly similar. I think I need to fix that. But um, <laughs> actually, it's not that big a deal if we just focus in the top right, maybe. But anyway, uh, obviously, when I'm using these in my D&D campaign, I polish them up a lot. <laughs> but... Uh, this is like the initial like throw down the map super quickly uh, using Ex Novo. Anyway, so like you, you draw a landmass and then you draw those lines for roads. And then you place, you know, citizens and landmarks and stuff in there. Uh, okay. Yes, I would like to remove that. There is in fact a Discord, uh, Boobot. I agree. Uh, so that the Discord shows up in the VOD, I'm going to paste that link. There you go. Now now people in the VOD can join the Discord. Um, anyway. I... Oh, do I really... Re do I really want to redo my lines? I do want to redo my lines. I want to... What I want to do is I want to start with some, like, straight lines. Because what I'm thinking is, broadly, is there was not a city here for a while. There was just, like, you know, isolated groups of people. But they had a nice road system. And they realized, hey, uh, all of our improvised nice road systems converge at this point. Let's make a nice city here. Which, I know, deciding that makes me skip several turns in Ex Novo, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to toss down some nice, like, straight roads. One, two... Wait, no, let's, let's make them even more, more cohesive. So let's say... One... Two... Three. Uh, da, da, da. Then those two, that, that line kind of connects those two roads. Uh, one, two, three, four, let's say. And the four main roads uh, meet in the middle here. And they're like, oh, well, we should build a city here. And this is when, the, then, then we can start adding weird lines on the top of it. So let's go... Something a little like this. One. One, two, three. Okay, one, two, three, four. F five. Oh, come on. Six. Seven. Eight. Ten and eleven.
Okay, so now we've got some nice, uh, some nice, some nice road layouts. Uh, let's pick up a darker green. Super quick. Bit darker. Can I just eye drop that green over there? Can I do that? Is that allowed? It, it doesn't let me do that. Okay. What kind of spider web is this? Yeah, it's Rhodes. It's Rhodes. We're we're that early in X Novo, so we're gonna we're gonna toss down the green because this city is smack dab in the middle of a rainforest. So there's no there's no land shape here. Uh, you know I've been I've done a lot of coastal cities with this, but this city stands out in more ways than one. Because it was decided to be put here. Uh, and it's just kind of... It's, it's really the odd odd man out as far as most cities in the setting go, actually. Anyway, that's, that's good enough. Uh, okay, so that's... Mm, we, ha we have purpose decision, we have purpose location... We know why it's here. Uh, are there any terrain features I want to put here? Uh, I want to put a river. Also, we haven't decided how many turns this is. Uh, mm, 20 turns. I'm going to say 20 turns because it's... Oh, jeez. Um, did I say 20 turns? Because the other, the other day, uh, I streamed this and I wasn't sure. Hang on, my... Ugh. Every feasible thing is stopping me tonight, apparently. Uh, anyway, uh, let's just say 20 turns. Uh, and if I meant crunch... <sighs> Come on, I got one more crunch in here somewhere. <sighs> um... Oh, my brain fell out. Okay, so let's say 20 turns. 20 turns, just for fun. It's been here a while, but it's not very... It, it's much less well-lived than some other cities. Okay, so... Yeah, unless there's something I want to put here. I want to I have a river running actually instead of that middle road there i'm gonna say that there is a river there uh is that river on the main map no it's not but you couldn't see it from the height that the map is depicting anyway it's not a small river just there's you know a lot of trees in the way So there's a river. I know, I've done the like river splits city in half a lot, but uh, I, I don't know, I like it. Um, I don't know, I know, I know cities tend to be placed upon rivers. So, you know, I think this was actually intentional. Hang on. I, I lied. I don't like where I put that river. I do want a river to be somewhere in this city, but I do not know where I want it to be. Uh, let's say... Is there any, like, one area that, like, most roads are avoiding? Let me look at the map here for a second. That's a very straight river for one that's been very there for a very long time. That's a good point. Rivers too, do get bendier with more time. Um, sorry, I'm looking at the roads here, and I'm like, well, no, none of them really avoid a spot here. Um, I mean, and we can always just have bridges. You know, this city has been existent for a long time. Uh, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah, river... And just kind of 
little bowleg lakes here-ish. You know, because, uh, oh, wait, no, I didn't do that right. I went that the back way. An idea. Okay. The city is in the trees. That's not a bad idea. Um. Ooh. Ooh, and it would, like, play into the, the, the concept that I have, that, it, like, this rainforest is literally constantly raining. Like, it is so humid there. Like, it... Spoiler a little bit, like, for five seconds later when we get there. Uh, they don't use paper. Um, it's too humid for paper to form. And all the pathways are bridges. I like that. And it kind of leans into, like it's so there's so much water and so much moisture that it's like constantly flooded almost oh and then this plays into a thing i have planned for later yes good good okay so i like that uh this is this is tree city uh and that kind of extends to all the other cities on the continent but this uh this city's weird because they just kind of decided, like, oh, yeah, we need a city to interact with other people. <laughs> they didn't really put down cities. They were just kind of, like, living in the trees. Same brain as always, indeed. Uh, let's, let's put a couple of other bowleg lakes here because I like those. I like it, it kind of gets across that there this this river's been there that long because you know rivers tend to put off bowleg lakes uh as they as they snick you know they they, they get bendier uh eventually they just kind of they bend so far that they break off and the water reconnects straight and then they leave off little, like, crescent moon lakes. So, I like that. I like that a lot. Anyway, let's not get too interested in making the map pretty. <laughs> We've got turns to take. Uh, so we know... We know that they decided uh, in... In great antiquity, the people living here, which are mainly Tabaxi, by the way, uh, they because this city is like the progenitor of the the Leopard King, and the pe therefore the people who like showed up to Dendron. Um. Oh, what was I? I opened my phone for something. Tabaxi. Um. 5e, yeah, 5e races. I want to make sure there's not, like, another race that would be here. Like, they like trees or something. Uh, because obviously tabaxi, like, they're, they're cat people. Duh. Um, you know, we haven't bumped into a lot of halflings. Maybe, hmm. I'm just I'm looking at the races available to D and D. Uh, if we're gonna lean on lean in on Tabaxi, I guess Leonin we could lean in on. Uh, you know the lion people from Theros. Uh, Ara ooh, there's nowhere with Aracocra, and they're up trees. I kind of like that. Like there, there's a tenuous uh, there's a tenuous sort of balance here because you know cats will go after birds i like that uh er, yeah there's eric hawk were here and they're like they're tenuously uniting with the with the leopard king here yeah 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 i like that that's that's plenty and that uh that lets the other four cities on the continent like the four smaller cities be uh you know either uh, uh Tabaxi or uh, Aarakocra. Yeah, unless there's someone super obvious that I'm missing here that fits. Not really. Like a Loxodon could not live up a tree. It's too heavy. It's a big ol' elephant boy. 
Yeah. Oh, mm, mm, I don't think I want to put fish people here. I mean, it would make sense for, like, fish people to live on the ground because it's, like, because the ground is so moisted. But, no, nah, we'll go with Aarakocra and Tabaxi in, like, a tenuous alliance. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, anyway, so we know that for sure, without ifs, ands, or buts, that there are roads here, uh, if I can make a straight line, roads here, all the straight lines are roads, and we don't have to worry about the river beneath them, it's probably best we're putting roads above the river actually so we know all the all the straight lines that uh are f mostly formed of a road network that connects like all the little little settlements here and there this was like this city was was like an intentional thing to be a cultural capital so to speak that i don't like the way that one came out like this uh this whole rainforest area um this whole rainforest area they did not uh they did not very much enjoy the concept of large cities so they were just kind of spread out living culturally all over the place uh but at some point they were like, yeah, we need to find, we need to found like a culture nerve center. That's, that's why this area was founded. It's kind of like a, well, if we keep some duplicate, you know, you know, if we keep a repository of things here and make sure it's duplicated across the continent, we'll be fine culturally. Yeah. Uh, I think... Okay, we, we need to make the power structure and the factions roles next. So power hierarchy, this will let you know how the city itself is organized to make decisions in progress. Often some form of hierarchy is employed. This table will help you figure out which one. Okay, well, uh, good luck with other stuff. Uh, I'm glad you're lurking. Uh, hierarchy. That's a four, uh, a governing council, a select few hold the reins. How is this council formed? What do qual what qualities do its members possess? Well, uh, I think, you know, leaning in on, they've decided to, uh, does this continent have a name? Okay, now I need to open my physical notebook and check because some, some portion of this area has a name, I guarantee it. Sick of not remembering names. This is why I write stuff down. Hang on. Uh, Dendron. Hmm. Permaston. Hang on. Du -du 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 -du. Okay, this continent doesn't have a name, does it? I... Oh my gosh. Really? Are we sure? Sorry, I have to, like, look at my writing from multiple angles, because if I'm in a hurry, it's a mess. Uh... Well, if this, if this continent doesn't have a... If this continent doesn't have a name, we get to name it right now. Right this second. Ironically, this continent has two, a source of two colonies. Uh, between the Leopard King's domain here and the uh, other, the, the place that spawned Kermaston. 
So let's name continent name generator. Because I'm real bad at names. Wait for this to go. Okay. Uh this this one doesn't have any Um Hmm. See if there's any of them I like here. Yabuhan? Uh maybe. Maybe. Emeotora. I like that one. Emeotora. Maybe. Uh where's my phone? I wanted to ch <laughs> my brain fell out. And I was looking at my phone. Yeah, let's go with Emeotora for the continent. Unless I've already named this. If I've already named all this, like, in session, my brain will explode. Meotora lore. I like that name for the continent. Um, let me just double check super quick, because it's going to make my brain explode if I don't make sure I don't already have names for certain things. Stin... Uh, Kermaston. Have we mentioned Kermaston? We've not. I guess if this hasn't, uh, this hasn't come up in session. Sure. All right. So Emeotora is the name of the place. And what's the name of the city? What's the name of the city? That's a good question. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, these are for... No, that's not the generator I want. Sorry, I'm very bad at names. What is this place's name? Uh, let's go with Rassel. No, that's too, that, no, I lied. Uh, I like that. Uh, Kessie, K-E-S-S-I -S -S is this city. I've decided. Not supposed to decide that until the end of the game, but guess who didn't pay attention to the rules sometimes? It's me. I do that. So, Kessie. Capital of the Leopard King's Domain. Uh, ironically, rules via council. Uh, composed of equal parts arrow okra and the boxy the leader of each half being crowned king of their people. Leopard King wanting more power eventually sends people to Dendron. Okay. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Okay, next roll. Factions. How many factions are there? We've already kind of decided that there's two factions, but we'll roll to see if this the the structure of the council expands to the factions. Uh, internal tensions. One in control, but one struggling. Uh, what makes it hard for the leading faction to remain in control? 
uh, we obviously have two factions. So we have uh, the Citizens of the Leopard King and the... Uh, Mm, fantasy name. I'm real bad at these. Uh, we have the citizens of the Leopard King and the the. Uh, I want I, I want to say Fletchers is the word I'm looking for. You know, people who make arrows. The. Orin Fletchers maybe. Uh, yeah. That name might need workshopping. Obviously, two factions. Uh, who are in pretty much constant tensia. Uh, so just to streamline, I really like the expanded power rules, but I'm too lazy to go look them up right now. So we're just going to use citizens as power as before all right and then we start rolling for events uh i think we need citizens on the map first so these are the starting rows so the starting districts are these shapes uh we're gonna say here uh, we need to decide shapes for each of them. Uh, didn't the... The tabaxi go on to, like, found a library somewhere, right? Hang on. I'm thinking too hard about this. Let's say that up arrow... Red up arrow... Is the Aarakocra and blue down arrow wait no yellow down arrow are the leopard king because they're down on their feet and the birds are up in the air okay so let's start rolling for history First roll is one, four, four. Oh, uh, did I mention, by the way, that uh, much like Kermaston, which has only oral histories, um, rather than being able to write anything, it's too humid for paper to set here. Like, genuinely, the production of paper is exorbitantly difficult. So instead of having paper to store information they have a series of knots uh like they'll they'll have you know a, some volume of fiber or string or thread or something and they'll tie knots in it in a pattern to store information that's something that i i wanted to make sure it was established before we got actually started okay so 144 we look on the table and it says a spy has stolen secrets. What were these secrets? What damage could be done to the city with such knowledge? Okay, so this... Like, very early on after the founding, uh, I think the... Which I'm deciding right now, Loxodon people, uh, and potentially the, the, the lion people maybe down there, I don't know. I might give a similar vibe there. <laughs> well, actually, we know what sort of people are th are in the red area based on who went to Kermaston. But anyway, um, I'm going to say the Lo Aloxodon spy uh, swoops in and steals a secret. What sort of secret? Um, I think at this point... There's not really a lot of secrets to steal. Mm. Hmm. I'm thinking. One moment, because I have like some other. This is the. Uh, this is gonna be a really difficult for session of Ex Novo for me because I have certain things I want to come up at certain times, and doing that while you're rolling on a table to make a narrative happen is very hard. Um, 
I think that these people with their not not uh, with their knots how they store information that's a way for them to keep information like secrets generally getting out uh but someone uh a loxodon person uh steals the knowledge of how the heck this knot theory words this knotting for information store uh, this tying of knots for information storage um is done Ugh. so you know they they get very upset about that after founding a loxodon from steals the knowledge of not tying to store information which previously kept their info very secret this increases tensions between the two factions that's what's lost uh, some trust is lost they're both very upset at, at one another for letting this happen it says remove something uh, there's not really anything we can remove on the map uh, okay so that's that turn uh, I don't have any citizens to place because we only have 11 citizens to place this time I think let me scroll up I said somewhere 13 citizens to place yeah, we have 13 citizens to place, so I'm not going to place them willy-nilly this time. But we have 19 turns. Uh, but we're rolling right now, so 18 turns. So we'll roll again. Rolling, rolling, rolling. 3, 5, 5. My, my dice have a bad habit of rolling two doubles tonight, apparently. Uh, 3, 55... is a new employer appears a giant new factory or successful business needs lots of people how do they leverage this position what do they produce at a resource and at a faction okay so i'm gonna say that uh frustrated at both the difficulty of storing a pile of knots and the fact that they're not they're not store they're not secrets have escaped um a company springs up uh to build mechanized looms yes this early on um you know not like a fully like automated loom or anything like you still have to you know send the shuttle and but someone builds like a a more like a a device to aid in the production of tapestry and still they lean on that kind of idea of uh geometry the geometry of the tapestry telling the story rather than you know outright creating a uh, representative tapestry but you know like uh, the there's a technical term for it but the like the structure of the tapestry stores information as though it is ones and zeros, so to speak. You know, it's in the same way that, like, punch cards for looms can be stored as a digital file now for ones and zeros, and how loom, loom punch cards eventually turned into computer punch cards, which, you know, there's a lot there, but, uh, the the way uh the the way the threading is structured in tapestries is now used to store information along with the knots yes this early <laughs> annoyed by the lack of secrecy in information keeping someone develops 
a tap a device to aid in making coded tapestries a loom to store larger amounts of information in a more convenient way instead of just having a pile of knots. Uh, this adds a resource to the to the screen. Can I do a gear shape? Because it, it, this feels very industrializing. It, it feels very industrializing. What I can do is I can make a circle and tack some squares onto it. Sure. Uh, there is a third faction now. It's the industrialists. Because we're adding a faction. So, circle. Circle. I'm heading out to go do my stuff, but you've got this. Good luck on the rest of your stream. Thank you. Uh, enjoy your stuff. <laughs> I hope what you're working on goes well. I don't. Uh, I assume you're off to go read Frankenstein. Which, by the way, that's been going well. If you ask me, anyway. Ah, uh, yes, this very accurate gear. Definitely a gear shape with very accurate teeth. Oh, we're on we're on Dorian Gray now. Okay, nice. Finished Frankenstein last night. Nice. Oh, fiddlesticks. Hang on. I'm putting way too much work into this gear shape. Well, enjoy Dorian. Uh, it's a real good story. I did Dorian for paper cuts, and my Dorian Gray voice shall live in infamy forever. <laughs> so... I hope that goes well. If it wasn't obvious, uh, Jubilee is a fellow reading streamer. Uh, she does... Uh, she usually leans a little further away from the classics than Paper Cuts does, actually. Uh, she's been doing a lot of... Um... I watched the movie, but I haven't read the book, so this is going to be crazy. It's pretty great. I I enjoy Dorian Gray. It's a, It's a good... It's a good time. Anyway, let's select this gear and copy it, because we're going to need it later. All right, so our third faction, the Industrialists, has arisen. The industrialists are probably who actually sends the um, the colonists, but they identify with the Leopard King. You know? <laughs> but I, I really like Dorian Gray. It's an it, it's especially for a classic, because like, classics are kind of hard to read sometimes. Um, <laughs> you know, all the antiquated English is difficult, but it's, it's, it's an enjoyable tale. Uh, three, six, one is our next turn here. Thirteen... 12, uh, let's place down a citizen, actually, while we're at it. We're gonna, gonna first of all, close off these districts here. Rit, dit, and rit, rdit, and 
Reddit, and then uh, let's say here, and uh, yeah, I think the Eric Cocker are gonna expand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now we'll resolve three six one. We're at sixteen turns, seventeen turns. Mm, okay, we've done how many turns so far? Uh, one, two. This is our third turn, so we have sixteen. We have seventeen turns left. Seventeen turns. Let's count up. Counting down's hard. <laughs> Numbers hard. So this is turn three. 361 is a massive influx of inhabitants. Where do these people come from? How are they welcomed? What new ideas do they bring along? Uh, news word finally gets around that, hey, we're trying to start a, a cultural capital here. You know, and people are like, oh, well, okay. I guess it's time to move in a little bit. Uh, so we add a new district or a new faction. Start being interested in living in this culture capital instead of just being spread out. Basically, the idea of cities finally catches on to people, and they move in in droves. Well, obviously, we need another another uh, um. I kind of want them to move in along somewhere somewhere connected to these main roads. Uh, let's say. I mean, I want it to make sense too. So yeah, we'll put it here. I think a bunch of tabaxi are like, oh, oh, we can live here, and they get very excited. They they're very enthused about it. All right, turn four. Uh, how many 13 citizens? So now we're down to 10 citizens. 10 citizens left. All right, turn four. Four, four, two. I thought I was about to roll four, 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 and I was like, that's a lot of fours. This is still a lot of fours. Four, four, two. Uh, education gains value. Uh, kids are sent to the school instead of the mines. Reading is valued, and more people find work in non-manual labor. Who controls this education? I think the industrialists are going to control this education. Uh, with all the people moving in, the industrialists being the controllers of how information is stored and shared for the most part start a school to teach those who are unlearned and thereby extend their control a bit. So we need, we need gear. Yeah, we'll have them, uh, let's have them expand this way actually. Except we didn't need the gear. Dang it, we needed a landmark for them. Uh, house shape. 
is what I'm thinking of. It will be in gray for the school, though. Gosh dang it. Yeah. Okay. Then do do do. Okay, a little schoolhouse shape to represent the school. Definitely, definitely clearly not uh not a very good schoolhouse shape, but it's fine. Uh school district happen. Turn five is five, six, five. Why my dice are so insistent on multiple numbers today? No one will ever know. I think these dice just really like to roll multiples of the same number. Uh, this roll is the city goes underground. No, it doesn't. The ground is a muddy, flooded mess. Uh, we're gonna skip, uh, we're gonna pick something manually out of the chart that fits a little better. Uh, a level is added to the city. Uh, below, above, on the air, floating on the sea. Uh, instead of building a district flat, uh, they're gonna stack a district on top of another district. <laughs> Yo dog, I heard you like districts, so we put a district in your district. Uh, I think people want to live above the school, uh, so they can, you know, send their kids there that much easier. Uh, so a small district... small like living district pops up above the school district represented by a smaller inner set of road there to more uh effectively house those who want to be educated quite easily. Thankfully, since they're in trees, it's easy to expand upward. Yeah, I like that. Just a smaller, smaller district. Oh, yay big, let's say. And, yeah, smaller district. Doot, 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 doot. Doot, 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 doot. There we go. Just some, just some dimensionality, TM. Uh, yeah, and those two districts are just kind of... They're populated, but we're not putting a citizen token on the map for power purposes. Uh, and, you know, over time, they're still continuing to, you know, make more and more complex tapestries. Uh, people are taking notice not in this area. Uh, they're very interested. I feel like Zonustein is the name I gave that red city, but I do not recall. Anyway, I, I need to quit sticking on that. Uh, turn six. Uh, I do need to keep an eye on the time, by the way. Uh, I can only go until like 9.30, and then I have to stop so I can exercise and be able to be done with that for the night before I have to sleep. Anyway, regardless. Turn six. Uh, two, five, six. 
we seem to roll two five six a lot i if i don't like what it is i'm going to re-roll it effective propaganda uh oh, that's that's too repetitive that's too repetitive with the school uh six four four did we already roll that i i need to pick different dice Six four four extinction. An important species of animal or plant is extinguished. What kind of life was it, and what caused this sudden loss? Remove something. Okay. Um. Hmm. What can we remove here? I mean, there's not really anything materially we can remove on the map. Actually, there is something we can remove remove materially on the map. Uh, so, they don't know it at the time, but, uh, there was a really tasty fish, uh, hanging out in the, in some of these, uh, arrowhead, or not arrowhead lakes, uh, bow lakes there, you know? Paint that over super quick. So in one of these arrowhead lakes that uh, is removed, what by? What would cause a lake to, to be gone in such a, in such a water-laden climate? Hmm. What would? I think uh, the downing of several large trees. Um... There is a large storm, and that large storm uh, fells a great number of trees that all thud, 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 thud onto that one where that lake was. So we need to put like something there to like represent that tree fall. I mean, it's not gonna still be there. It might actually be like a variation of terrain there. Uh, yeah, let's let's do that. Let's. Um... How do I get across? There's like a little hill there. I can just draw it in a different green. There's like a arch tool here. There we go. So we can just draw a little little hill shape there. Um, a large number of trees falling. Marks a historically impressive calamity to strike the area, if not the city itself. And there's a large, uh, there's to this day, and there's for some time a large hill from where all those trees decayed into a big ol' soil lump. Unbeknownst to the inhabitants, this extinct a fish not a fish. What else lives in water? I, mm, frog. I like that. Frog. Frog. Ooh. Ooh. This extincts a frog that some believe to cause a uh, extensive hallucinations that was used by the people on the ground nearby was formerly used by the people on the ground nearby to enhance 
their scrying magics. Not anymore though. Let me check just one more thing, because I needed to I need to know how long Dendron has been there. Because this city founded Dendron. Uh, how many turns total was this? This was 16 turns. So at least four turns in, this, this place needs to found. Or needs to send people for Dendron. One. Two. Three. Four, five, uh, yes, I agree. And, uh, this is also coincidentally on the advice of the now weakened scryers the leopard king sends a colonizing force to what will become dendron on the assumption it's empty of peoples and full of resources. I like that. Zeet zoot, says my phone, and I have to make sure it's not like the world exploding. It's not. We're good. Alright, uh, turn seven. Uh, do I want to put any citizens before I start turn seven? I do not. Turn seven <laughs> is six, five, five. Mm. I'm I'm picking different dice. I'm picking different dice. Hang on, let me get better dice. Cause I'm sick of these sick of these dice. They're not rolling like I want them to. Getting my nice DM dice. One. I really should use the uh, the blue ones that I usually use for Ex Novo. Anyway, turn seven. What do we roll for turn seven? Six, four, three. A uh, new life, a new species of plant or animal is discovered. Is this a mutation? Is it created, imported, or fallen out of the sky? What benefits or dangers does it bring? Almost immediately. Uh, an invasive animal from eventual dendron arrives from a supplying run a supplying ship that returns uh what is it it is i'm gonna say plant i'm gonna say it's an invasive plant it's an invasive plant that produces shockingly hot peppers for now these peppers aren't particularly particularly useful but eventually they'll be used in preserving foods 
it'll be used dried in preserving foods. I'm going to say smoked instead of dried because it's too wet to dry anything. Okay, yeah, uh, an, invas an invasive pepper brings, uh, initially danger because it's so spicy, but eventually it brings a way for them to, uh, to, uh, handle their food, you know? Uh, we're just gonna put a little... Put a little red triangle. Uh, I'm gonna put it. Do I want it to grow on that hill? Um. Yeah, a big old soil lump. I think I think this particularly fertile soil also uh, grows the peppers. So we're gonna put little little red triangles. These aren't going the right direction. <laughs> it's fine. We're gonna put little red triangles here and remember that I mean that these mean peppers. Peppers, yay! Hot and spicy ones. Initially explode in growth on the Big old rotted tree hill. All right, let's go turn eight. Three, six, one. A massive influx of inhabitants. Didn't we already say that? <laughs> I think we already had a massive influx of inhabitants, didn't we? Ah, uh, yeah, we did. We did earlier. Oh, I thought I rolled 361 again. I rolled 364. Eh, no. 265. I'm sure we rolled that. 265. A revolution fails. The status quo remains untouched. What do the losers suffer? How are the heroes of the struggle immortalized? Uh, I think that buoyed on by the fact that they could send a set of uh, people to colonize a whole area and the Loxodons not, or not the Loxodons, the uh, Aarakocra not getting a foot in edgewise. Uh, the, the Leopard King tries to usurp some of the Aarakocra's power. And it doesn't go well for him. He loses a bunch of power because of it. I forgot to type turn 8 in the chat. Oops. I'll, I'll type it now. Turn eight. Uh, so turn eight is Leopard King thinking big because he colonized Dendron. At what point does... Uh, see, this is the problem with writing interconnected lore is now I'm like... Oh no, does this work? When does Dendron have things happen? Uh, turn 8 for Dendron. So... Yeah, I think that's funny because uh, it still takes them like... It still takes Dendron, it still takes Dendron, like, 
quite a few years to figure out, like, oh, they've lost a lot of power. Tries to gain power in his own city. But his efforts are quashed in a major way by the other two factions who want things even, at least between themselves. The, uh, I think the industrialists uh, gain some power here, uh, and the, I think the industrialists gain some power here, and the, the Leopard King loses a little bit of power. Leopards are down. Industrialists and Aarakocra are equal. All right. Turn nine. Wait, I'm, I'm gonna make sure I didn't like. Oh yeah, no, it's just a faction loses power. Okay. Ooh, turn nine. Let's go. Roll, 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 roll. Six, six, one. That sounds like it's gonna be something big. A plague scares the city. Rumors and tales of disease spread. Maybe it already reached the neighboring cities. Uh, how do officials and citizens uh, react? Decisively or haphazardly? Um, I think that uh, the plague is from people not preserving their meat correctly because the uh, invasive pepper, you know, powder uh, is not is not common enough yet, uh, and I think that the industrialists, for all their wit, are uh, blamed for the pandemic. Uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, a plague. Uh, the industrialists lose power because despite having the knowledge to preserve food, they don't share it. Causing a foodborne plague that knocks the city's population down quite noticeably and people are understandably very upset about it hmm See, I'm almost tempted to make the loom uh, a later development and make uh, the industrialists instead uh, like a stone workers because uh, eventually Dendron has the aqueduct that that then fall that fails and causes Shuttleman's disease. Uh, and I kind of want that to tie back in. Uh... Actually, when does the aqueduct happen? Historically. Someone's scratching at the door back there. Um. Oh no, he opened the door. Come on, Magnus. Uh, 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 aqueduct. Okay, yeah, that's... That's actually about now. Um, the collapse of the aqueduct. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, the aqueduct uh, causes causes Shuttleman's disease and then collapses. So, yeah, I'd say uh, the industrials. Yeah, uh, the industrialists in, in response to this. Uh, turn 10. I'm just going to manually select turn 10, by the way. Turn 10. Turn 10. Uh, the industrialists. Trying to save face. Learn to construct aqueducts and other various water controlling edifice gotta use all that rain somehow after all thankfully this cuts down on waterborne illnesses a whole lot. Some of the failed <laughs> stone workers eventually emigrate to Dendron, making the aqueduct that generates Shuttleman's disease. All right, uh, I'm gonna add a citizen actually for that, or I'm gonna add a landmark, duh. So that means this thing, this thing, and we're just gonna put a little uh, we're going to throw down a district. We're going to throw down a district here. And I'm going to put an aqueduct in it as the uh, Zid Zoot says my phone. And I say I don't really care all that much. Right now, I'm busy. So there's a little aqueduct shape. Hang on, lighter gray. Put this little aqueduct shape in this district. picking the wrong thing. This is the joy of using MS Paint for all these maps. Okay, so we build this little aqueduct here. And it's far from the only like you know water controlling thing. They like they they make aqueducts and they make, you know, things that direct streams and you know, at some point there's like a big old like stone vessel like a reservoir that holds a bunch of water you know it, it's not just this aqueduct that's on the map but it will it, it, it spins into other things so turn 11 what's our role for turn 11 uh three one one Uh, depends on imports. Self-sufficiency is a noble goal, but alas, the city would never survive without imported goods. What needs to be imported and who provides it? What does need to be imported and who does provide it? Um, I think with this new found handle on water, 
uh, they need they need something to purify it all with. Uh, what would, what's what's an old timey water purifier? I'm thinking of iodine, but that doesn't feel like the right thing. Uh, you know what? Uh, I think we could play into uh, Kermaston and the Ashen Land. Uh, charcoal. They need charcoal to filter their water. And uh, obviously it's not the only way they can filter their water, but it's the easiest old-timey water filter I can think of. Uh, this new water system creates a dependency on imported charcoal from the Ashen Land. Uh, this is 11 turns in. I don't know, I like these, I like these areas being a little more tied together than, and Karsus just kind of being uh, out in the world all by itself. Yeah, the Ashen Land. How many turns are here? Yeah, so then the Ashen Land would exist by now. Or the city in the Ashen Land, the uh, Kermaston. So Kermaston would exist by now. So they're trading with Kermaston. From Kermaston. Despite its main export being soap, as they need to filter the water somehow. Um, and that makes the leading faction lose power. So the leading faction right now is. One, two, one, two, one. Uh, I think the Aarakocra, uh lose power here. Uh, why do they, though? I think... Uh, mm, I know why. Uh, this is a push by the Leopard people to kind of push back. Like, oh, well, we, uh, we sent people out to get our imported goods. Uh, what, have, what have you done? Uh, allowed someone else to actually no I don't want the industrious to just immediately lose that power they just gained but I think that's what's going to happen um yeah uh public opinion of the industrialist Falls as they're seen as inducing this artificial need that now needs to be filled. We didn't need to filter the water before you were getting it off the ground. So we re remove the um, this gear here. Goodbye gear. I think that's it for the night. Like I, I, I want to keep going, but I need to get my exercise in. So uh, I'm gonna keep working on this area. Does did I name the city Kessie? That's what I named this city. Okay, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna work on uh, the rest of Kessie on my own. Uh, just to finish up the city. Um, odds are 
I'm not going to work on the other two main cities on stream. I need to get them done faster than that. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, just to make sure everybody has a place to go. I might work on the last main city on stream, but I need to have uh, Zonustin. I know where I left that name now. I know where I left that name. It's in the dossier. Because there's a set of people that things are happening to, and this guy is from... There it is. Right there. The whole time. One of the people that something happened to, uh, for plot reasons mostly, uh, is from the country that, or the city that colonized, or the city that, you know, put people into Kermaston. Uh, and it's called Zonustin. Uh, that's spelled like this. And guess who forgot? Sorry, there was an orange ladybug biting my neck. And I wasn't a fan of that. Uh, guess who forgot to put that in the appropriate document outside of that dossier? It's me. And I was like, why do I know this name but not know where it is? That's why. Uh, Zonustin. Sorry, I'm fixing this. I probably could fix this off stream, but I'm not. Anyway, that's... That's, uh, that's it, that's all for tonight. Uh, I could go a little further, but I need to exercise, and I forgot to do it before stream, so here I am, uh, having to stop early. Um, let me save this map, and we'll work on it more later. Hang on, what did we name this place? I just said Kessie. There we go. Kessie unfinished. All right, folks. Uh, I might, uh, you know, summarize the rest of Kessie's history on another history on another episode um i might not who knows uh we'll cross that bridge when we get there uh this has been ex novo uh we also played um uh, superhuman industrial uh today and that was fun i ge i genuinely had a great time playing superhuman industrial uh i posted a link to where that lives in the chat at some point uh save emotora lore how many turns did we have left we had 20 turn we had 20 turns total so we have nine left okay so that's it that's all uh thanks for tuning in uh if you're watching the vod or if you're watching live i hope you have a great week um, uh, Friday probably is more Xenoblade. I've learned a little bit about the systems and how Xenoblade X works, so I'm actually able to enjoy what's going on. There's several things that were, were hinted at with the, uh, UI design that I either did not catch or, or understood incorrectly, so I'm very excited to suss those out anyway that's that's where the vod's ending tonight uh thanks for tuning in like i said i hope you have a great week and uh keep making neat things